Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire in the background. Now, a while ago I did a presentation comparing 9x19 to 40 Smith & Wesson in their role as police sidearms. And that led to a lot of people requesting a similar comparison between 40 Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP, not just for police use, but for security personnel, concealed carry, etc. So, here we are. Now, there's a wide variety of firearms available in both of those calibers, but to account for as many extraneous variables as I could, what I'm going to use is the Glock Model 22 in caliber 40 Smith & Wesson compared to the Glock Model 21 in caliber 45 ACP. Now these two handguns are virtually identical, but there are two significant differences. Because the 45 ACP is bulkier, the Glock Model 21 has a significantly bigger grip. And not only does it have a bigger grip, it has a smaller magazine capacity, 13 rounds as compared to 15. And those differences are not universal, but they are common when you're comparing two handguns that are very similar except for one's a 40 and one's a 45. But those things notwithstanding, talking mainly about the cartridges, there's a lot of debate over which is more powerful or which is more effective and so on. So today let's shoot these two side by side and see if we can shed any light on that debate. Now the first thing I want to deal with is the mundane task of determining which of these two cartridges is more powerful. And it comes with a caveat that more powerful does not necessarily mean more effective. And the way you judge power is through velocity and energy foot-pounds. Energy foot-pounds being the true bottom line. Well, I've got the chronograph set up at seven yards. We'll shoot some different types of ammo and see what kind of velocities we get. Now, one of the real problems here is finding 40 Smith & Wesson ammo and 45 ACP ammo that's similar enough that when we compare them, we don't have lots of people complaining about something or other not being fair. Well, I think I found some ammunition that'll overcome that. And what we'll start with is Remington Golden Saber 40 Smith & Wesson 180 grain jacket at hollow point. So let's see what kind of velocities we get. One thousand thirteen. One thousand twenty three. One thousand and four. One thousand and one. 997. Now let's see how that compares to the 45. Now we'll try that with the 45 and we'll use the Remington Golden Saber 185 grain jacket at hollow point. Five grains difference in projectile weight, I think we can live with that. 1051. 1013. 1,076, 1,077, and 1,027. Now let's go crunch the numbers. So how'd we do? Well, with our 40 Smith & Wesson, we got a mean velocity of 1,007. And with our 45 ACP, a mean velocity of 1,049. So that's 42 feet per second more. Let's just round that off to 40. So in comparing the two, the 45 is a greater diameter than the 40, 45 versus 40. It's greater mass than the 40, 185 grains versus 180 grains. And it's got greater velocity by about 40 feet per second. So not drastically more, but definitely more. Now let's try a different type of ammunition and see how we do. I've got this Hornady American Gunner. And again, the 40 Smith & Wesson is a 180 grain jacket at hollow point, And the 45 ACP is a 185 grain jacket at hollow point. Let's see how these compare. And again, we'll start with the 40 Smith & Wesson. 1,029. 1,008. 1,009. 1,017. 992. Now let's see how that compares to the 45. Now let's try our 45 ACP American Gunner Ammo. 1,013. 980. 989. 1,001, 975. 
Now let's go crunch those numbers. Now with the Remington Golden Sabre, the 45 is the clear winner. With the American Gunner, it's not so clear. The 45 is still greater diameter and greater mass, but in this case, the 40 Smith & Wesson had a mean velocity of 1,011, while the 45 had a velocity of 991. So your 40 Smith & Wesson has a velocity of 20 feet per second more. Not a lot, but still more. But it achieves it with a lighter bullet. So where does that shake out in terms of energy foot-pounds? Well, if I did my math right, 45 has energy foot-pounds of 403, is where the 40 Smith & Wesson has 408 negligible at best. So it would appear that in terms of which one of these is more powerful, it has a great deal to do with what type of ammunition you buy, and there's a wide variety of ammunitions for both calibers. So we see that when we load the 40 and the 45 with similar bullet weights, we get similar velocities and similar energy foot-pounds. But how does that translate into results on a real solid target like these $2 concrete blocks? Especially when we take into consideration that quite often the 40 and the 45 are not loaded with similar bullet weights. A very common projectile weight for the 40 is 165 grains, while probably the most common load for the 45 is a 230 grain projectile. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back 10 yards, I'll shoot the target on your left with 40 Smith & Wesson Winchester White Box 165 grain full metal jacket, and the target on your right with 45 ACP Winchester White Box 230 grain full metal jacket. And let's see what happens. Now that was 13 shots apiece, and there's the results. So I'll set this up again, and we'll repeat this and see if we get a similar result. And again, I'll shoot the target on your left with the 40 Smith & Wesson 165 grain, and the target on your right with the 45 ACP 230 grain. Now this time we fired five shots with the 40 Smith & Wesson and six with the 45 ACP. Pretty similar result, but why is this so much different than the first two blocks we shot? Because these two blocks, although the same as each other, they were not the same as the first two blocks I used. Obviously the target can make a lot of difference. We also see that the 45 ACP with its 230 grain bullet, although that might be advantageous under some conditions, wasn't really advantageous here. Now we saw when we chronographed ammunition with similar bullet weights, we got velocities that were fairly close. But very typically a 40 Smith & Wesson is loaded with a 165 grain bullet, while a 45 ACP is typically loaded with a 230 grain bullet. And what kind of difference will that make? Well we saw shooting the cinder blocks, not much. But how about in terms of how much drop you're going to get at distance? Well I'm going to shoot the target on your left with 40 Smith & Wesson, Remington Green & White Box, 165 grain metal case, Remington calls it metal case, and I'll shoot the target on your right with 45 ACP, Remington Green & White Box, 230 grain metal case, and I'll shoot from 60 yards and we'll see if the 45 has significantly more drop than the 40 does.
So how did we do in terms of drop? Well, with the 40 Smith & Wesson, you can see I hit off to the left. That's just me with that gun. But in terms of drop, it appears not much. With the 45, I can't see any. Now, we know that that 230 grain ball ammunition at distances, let's say, of 100 yards, depending on what kind of gun you're using, there can be quite a bit. But in terms of shooting 60 yards, what I would consider a very realistic distance for a pistol shot, I don't see a significant difference between these two at all. Shooting at 60 yards brings up the subject of accuracy, specifically to what degree will grip size and recoil negatively affect accuracy. Well, in shooting these two guns with similar bullet weights at similar velocities, I was experiencing similar recoil. But when I start shooting the 40 with the 165 grain projectile and the 45 with the 230 grain projectile, I'm experiencing a lot more recoil with the 45. Also, although I have an average to above average sized hand, the grip on this Model 21 is too big. It's significantly bigger than the grip on the Model 22, and I find it uncomfortable to shoot this pistol. So how will that affect my accuracy? Well, I'll go back 25 yards and I'll shoot the target on your left with the 40 Smith & Wesson with a 165 grain projectile, and the target on your right with the 45 ACP with a 230 grain projectile, and we'll see how the accuracy compares. Well, the group at the 45 might look a little better, but if you were to put a numerical score on it, with this I got 43, and with the 40 I got a score of 41. So not much difference. So we can't really say the heavier recoil is affecting accuracy in terms of slow fire. But what if we were trying to shoot fast? Well, let me show you something. Now I've got two bigger shooting C's set up, and I'm going to shoot from 15 yards. And again, I'll shoot the target on your left with the 40 and the target on your right with the 45. But this time what I'll do is I'll shoot each of these with 10 shots and I'll fire as fast as I think I can hit the target and we'll see how the two guns compare for speed and accuracy. So is the group I got with the 45 better? Yeah, it looks like it, but if you put a numerical score on it, this has a 97, and with the 40 I got a 96. But in shooting the 45, was I slower? Yes. Was I enough slower to make a difference? You be the judge. Now what if you're trying to shoot multiple targets quickly? I've got nine knockdown plates set up, and what I'll do is shoot one through nine, do a magazine change, during which one through six will pop back up, then I'll shoot those again for a total of 15 rounds. And I'll start with the 40 Smith & Wesson, and then we'll repeat that with the 45 ACP and see how they compare for speed and accuracy. Now let's try that with the 45 and see how we do. Now let's try the 45. Well, there's no difference in accuracy, a difference in speed, you be the judge. Now, while we're shooting these knockdown plates, a viewer asked about how this setup works. Well, there's six plates, and you put them up, and they're just held in place with gravity. And then in front of each one of them is a bolt that can be adjusted so their angle can be changed, requiring a more powerful hit to knock them over. And when they're all down, someone pulls the rope and sets them back up. Now, this leverage system is put in place because these plates are pretty heavy. And so with this, it allows you to have greater leverage so that a person of moderate strength can set them up. 
And although this is more complex than it would initially appear, it really is a good system. Now it's time for our favorite target, soda bottles. Now we were shooting those knockdown plates with 40 Smith & Wesson 165 grain versus 45 ACP 230 grain. But how will those two compare against a target like soda bottles? Well, I got the 40 Smith & Wesson loaded with Winchester White Box 165 grain full metal jacket. So I'll shoot these six soda bottles, then we'll see how that compares to the 45. Not too bad for full metal jacket ammo. Now let's see how the 45 compares. I've got the 45 loaded with Winchester White Box 45 ACP 230 grain full metal jacket. Well, if the goal was to get me wet, I'd say the 45 was a lot better. Now, cement blocks and soda bottles in the chronograph give us a lot of good information, but what I consider a definitive test is the meat target. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this, it's pork chops to simulate a pectoral muscle, followed by pork ribs, watermelon lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, and then behind that, as always, the high-tech fleece bullet stop. I've also added to the front these raw pig ears to act as skin. I found them in the meat department at the grocery. We'll cover that with four layers of t-shirt, and we'll shoot from seven yards. Now I'm going to start with the 40 Smith & Wesson and this Remington Golden Saber 180 grain jacket at hollow point. So let's see how we do. Well, the bullets went through the front and where they hit the ribs, shattered them, chewed up our watermelon really well, went through the ribs on the back, and all of the bullets were either stopped by the t-shirt or the first layer of fleece. And as is very typical with Golden Sabres, a couple of them lost their jackets. Let me show you a close-up of them. So the penetration was good, the expansion is very good, and as is typical with Golden Sabres, some of them lost their jacket. Now we'll repeat that with our Golden Saber 45 ACP 185 grain jacket at hollow point, and we'll see if there's a difference. Well, with the 45, where the bullets hit the ribs on the front, pulverized them, did a lot of damage to our watermelon, where the bullets hit the ribs on the back, shattered them, and again, all four projectiles were stopped either by the t-shirt or the first layer of fleece. Now, let me show you a close-up of the bullets. And the expansion is extremely good, and with the 45, three of the four kept their jackets. There's no question that the Golden Saber ammo, both the 40 and the 45, are quite effective, but was the 45 more so? you be the judge. Now you'll recall that the chronograph showed us that with the Golden Saber ammo, the 45 had a little more velocity than the 40. But with the Hornady American Gunner ammunition, the 40 had slightly more velocity than the 45. So let's repeat this with the Hornady American Gunner and see if our results are any different. And we'll start with the 40 Smith & Wesson 180 grain jacket at hollow point. And again, we'll shoot from seven yards. Well, where our bullets hit the ribs on the front, broke them, chewed up our watermelon really well, put holes through the ribs on the back, and again, all of the projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt of the first layer of fleece. Now let me show you a close-up of the bullets. And these Hornady American Gunner projectiles kept their jackets, and the expansion is pretty good. Now we'll try our Hornady American Gunner 45 ACP with its 185 grain jacket at hollow point. Well, where our bullets hit the ribs on the front, put holes in them, chewed up our watermelon fairly well, put holes out the back, and again, every projectile was stopped by the first layer of fleece. Now let me show you a close-up of these projectiles. And you can see that with our Hornady American Gunner 45 ACP ammo, the expansion is there, but it's not all that impressive. So what can we take away from everything we've seen today? Well, hopefully several things. Now to reiterate, when you have two handguns of similar design, one's a 45 and the other's a 40, very typically the 45 has a bigger grip and a smaller magazine capacity. And that's the case here. This 45 has a grip that is uncomfortably large for me, which means it's going to be uncomfortably large for a lot of people. Now if you're someone who has huge hands, well then it might be a plus. As far as magazine capacity goes, that has been an argument for as long as there's been multiple shot guns. And the only thing I could say to that argument is, if you had two handguns that were similar, except one had an eight shot magazine and the other had a six, I think it's a valid argument that eight is better than six. 
But when you're talking about the difference between 15 and 13, especially given how fast you can reload handguns, I don't think the argument that 15 is better than 13 is all that valid. But every person has to make that choice for themselves. But the main thing we're talking about is some of the conceived notions people have, such as because the 40 can fire a much lighter bullet, that it will have a lot less drop at distance. Depending on which ammunition you select, that's probably very true. But at the 60 yards we shot today, I couldn't see any difference. And 60 yards is probably about as far as most people are going to shoot. If you envision that you're going to shoot 100 or 150 yards, then that might make a difference. But as we've seen, depending on which ammunition you select, you can overcome that. Also, the idea that because the 40 with its lighter bullet can have less recoil, therefore you can shoot it more accurately and faster. Well, I couldn't see any difference in accuracy. As far as the speed, there was very little difference. Was it enough to be a difference? You be the judge. But the main thing we're talking about in the difference between these two calibers is which one is more powerful and or more effective. And what I think we can determine is that that is affected far more by which ammunition you select than by the caliber. We saw that according to the chronograph with our Golden Sabre ammunition, the 45 was a little more powerful and it seemed to be more effective on the meat target. As where we get just the opposite results with this American Gunner ammunition, the 40 was slightly more powerful and seemed to be the more effective of the two. So ammunition selection is paramount in discussing which one of these is better. But the real bottom line that I would say to all of this is, everybody has to select the right gun for them. It has to fit you, fit your hand, fit your budget, fit your needs, fit your local laws, and so on. And the only thing I can conclude from all of this is, if I had either of these guns, as long as I got to select which ammo I wanted, I would not feel undergunned with either of them. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 40 vs. 45 video.